Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Calgary Economic Development Report to the Community. I hope you've had a good chance to network and visit prior to our lunch today. I'm Wellington Holbrook, the Executive Vice President of ATB Business and Agriculture. And I'd like to start by acknowledging several special guests that are here with us. First of all, Senator Doug Black. Mayor, yes, all right. Senator. Mayor Nenshi, who will also be saying a few words later on. And Alderman Peter DeMong, Brian Pincoot, Richard Putmans, and Andre Chabot. Thank you each for being here. Now, I did have the privilege of emceeing this event a year ago as well, and I know we are in for an exciting afternoon. However, this year's format is going to be a bit different than it's been in the past. We will hear from the Chair of Calgary Economic Development to learn about their accomplishments in 2012. For today's keynote, we are going to try something a little bit different. We're going to have five inspiring speakers instead of just one, but not to worry, You'll, we'll still have you back at the office on time. Each of our speakers is from an organization that showcases Calgary business energy in their own way. WestJet, TELUS, Mount Royal University, Evans Hunt, and Quintero Imaging will tell their own story in five-minute vignettes. And as you'll notice, these are all organizations outside of the energy industry. But that certainly isn't an indication that our energy industry is becoming any less important in Calgary. Without a doubt, it's still what drives our economy forward. However, we also know that the energy industry in Calgary makes it possible for all kinds of other businesses to thrive. And that's what we'll be hearing about from each of today's speakers. At, AT, at ATB Business, we get it. And we know the importance of supporting and building relationships with businesses in our great city. And we also know that doing business in Calgary and throughout Alberta is different from doing business just about anywhere else in the world. As an organization, ATB Financial is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year, and we'll be taking the opportunity, and we are taking the opportunity, to, to continue to showcase our unrivaled understanding of Alberta business. Alberta means the world to us, and we're focused on supporting and building great relationships with entrepreneurs who are so often the foundation of our communities, and together, they help us build a world-class city. To help celebrate entrepreneurs, we just recently launched an exciting initiative, and I'm very excited about it. In fact, over the next few months, we're going to be sharing the stories of 10 Alberta entrepreneurs who are each helping to grow Alberta in their own unique way. And in fact, the very first business that was showcased was Foundry Communications, a Calgary business that we're very, very proud to be associated with. You can also follow us on ATB Business Road Trips at atb.com. We grow Alberta, and there, there are little cards on your tables with all the information you need to check it out. They're cool. Trust me, they're really, really cool. And that's, that's hard for a banker to say cool on anything, by the way. But that's a completely different story. I know we're going to hear some great stories throughout the event today as we introduce Calgary Economic Development's report to the community. Lunch is now going to be served, and we'll continue with the official program shortly after 12. But if you haven't done so already, during lunch there will be people coming around with bowls that you can drop your business card into in order to be entered to win a pair of tickets courtesy, courtesy of WestJet to fly anywhere they fly in Canada. We'll announce the winner at the end of our program, but there's a catch. You need to be here to win. Enjoy your lunch. Hello again, everyone. To get us started this afternoon, I would like to introduce the Chairman of the Board for Calgary Economic Development, Wilf Govert. Wilf has served the Board of Calgary Economic Development for nearly five years and is actively involved with numerous other boards and community events. Please join me in welcoming Wilf. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our report to the community. <clears throat> on, the after, on the behalf of the board, I'd like to welcome you to the 2012 report to the community. I've had the distinct honor of holding the position of chair to the board of directors of Calgary Economic Development for the past five years. 
In that time, I've seen a tremendous amount of change in both the city and within our organization. It's fair to say that there's never a shortage of work and economic development as a profession, as the profession continues to evolve as the global economy changes. At Calgary Economic Development, we've been fortunate to be presented with opportunities that uh, more opportunities than challenges by virtue of where we live, in a strong city, a strong province, and a strong country. But that doesn't mean that we can take our eye off the ball or that our job is easier. In fact, it's to the contrary. Calgary Economic Development continues to look for long-term opportunities both in and uh, out of the region while addressing some of the short-term, more pressing issues associated with the pace of growth we've seen in this city for two decades or more. The reality is that the scope of economic development continues to grow, and frankly, we're constantly looking for ways that allow us to do more to ensure that Calgary remains a great place to live and do business and remains an economic driver for our country. We couldn't do this without the support of so many people, many that are in attendance today. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome and thank His Worship, Mayor Nahed Nenshi. Uh, the city and our organization have greatly benefited from your leadership and support. It's fair to say that you've been instrumental in changing perceptions about Calgary and creating meaningful dialogue on city funding and development to ensure we navigate smart growth yet maintain the essence and authenticity of our city. Thank you. In addition, I'd like to extend a warm welcome and thank you to our city councillors who have joined us today, including Alderman Richard Putmans, uh, Peter DeMong, Andre Chabot, and finally, our board seat member, Brian Pincott. All of our board members are volunteers and are truly passionate Canadian, Calgarians, as well as Canadians, uh, who give a tremendous amount of time and effort to our organization. I'd like to acknowledge our board members, Eric Axford, Gabriel Franco, Brett Ironside, and Murray Ziegler, who could not be with us, as well as those in attendance, including Patty McLeod, Bill Chomick, Duncan Owl, and departing board members, David Watson and Lou Turnquist, and new board members, Rollin Stanley and Hans Kovac. Thank you for your ongoing co contribution to the organization and our city. And most importantly, I'd like to thank our 67 Action Calgary partners from the corporate world. Your investment and engagement in the programs we create is most appreciated, and without your support, we could not be able to do a lot of the good work. You've seen our Action Calgary partners displayed throughout the lunch here today. You'll also be hearing from many of them, including WestJet, which is now the official airline for Calgary Economic Development. I'd like to ask all the Action Calgary partners at this time to stand and be acknowledged. Could you please stand up if you're with Action Calgary partner? Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Action Calgary is a, a partnership, obviously, between CED and, and the corporate community. Uh, totaling 67 corporations now and in the past five years we've raised our financial revenue sourcing from corporate partners from near zero to 40 percent of this year's budget. And finally I'd like to also extend my welcome to Senator Doug Black who has joined us and we're so delighted to have you here. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to extend a special word of thanks to the Calgary Economic Development Team for their work this year in connecting people and businesses in Calgary with opportunities across the country and indeed around the world. Bruce Graham, our CEO and President, is going to share those success stories 
from 2012 with you today. But before Bruce takes the stage, I want to kick off one of our latest projects. For Calgary Economic Development, the Destination Calgary video is focused on attracting labor to our market and attracting families, in fact. Since its launch earlier this year, there have been over 120,000 people view it online. So without any further delay, I'd like you to see this video. Thank you. It's where I live, it's where I breathe, it's where I feel every moment going by. It's where I've come to feel the sun and the freedom of the sand, the soap and sky. And I hear, yeah. I don't know if that was the asparagus or the video, but I'm pumped up. I hope you enjoyed that. Did you? Was that good? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, after 120,000 viewings of that viewing of that video, uh, we've received a lot of praise, Ashley. So thank you for the warm uh, reception there. Uh, but we've also received some comments, some suggestions, and one of those I want to share with you uh, is that. Wouldn't, it would have just been a little bit better had we included the mayor. And, well, I'm waiting for a reaction to that. I don't know. It is an election year. Actually, you know, Mayor, I thought that was a great suggestion, and we are going to take it under advisement. And uh, <laughs> it'll be in the sequel, I'm sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bruce Graham. I'm with Calgary Economic Development, and I'm very, be I'm very pleased to be uh, addressing a sold-out group here today and uh, we're also pleased to have ProJack manage that little project uh, and it's one of the benefits of having a film office as part of your operations but I can tell you it doesn't get done unless you have good partners that are providing great input and I want to specifically identify Tourism Calgary, the Calgary Tells Convention Center, the Calgary Hotel Association and of course our funding partners Action Calgary for allowing us to all come together. And as Wolf uh, pointed out, the main objective of this video is to be a tool in the toolbox. It's about attracting labor to our city. And also, I think in the process, 
breaking down some of the perceptions of around this city, and of course, to invite people to be part of the energy right here. Now, one of the interesting things about this video is that uh, it was created by Calgarians. As a matter of fact, the camera crew, the director, the composer, the magician, and the hundreds of volunteers you saw, basically everybody, they're all Calgarians. Now, my big issue is that the video looked to me like was virtually everybody was younger than me. Um, and actually, I was told by my staff that that's true. They are. And they also reminded me that they're targeting people that have bright futures. And that really hurt. Anyways, there is a shorter version of that video that's going to be coming out shortly. You'll see it on TV, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, share that video with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Tweet it, Facebook it, blog it. Uh, burn it. If you can still burn things on CDs, do that as well. Because, um, you know, as much as a, a video really helps tell our story, I think that, um, you know, that story is also being told for us. Uh, and when publications like Money Sense magazine says, we're the top city in Canada to live, and when The Economist ranks us number five in the world, people are starting to pay attention. People know that we are for real and we're not playing second fiddle to anybody. So let's turn our attention to 2012. After all, this is an annual report and 2012 was a very interesting year. And while many parts of the world suffered from, I think, continued economic uncertainty, I think that's fair to say, Calgary continued to be a driving force in the Canadian economy. GDP in our city grew by 3.3%. Our unemployment rate, uh, rate uh, remained low at 4.8. In fact, there was 29,000 or nearly 29,000 new jobs created in the city. And accordingly, over 52% of all the new jobs in this province were created here in Calgary. 14% of all the new jobs in Canada, which I find astounding considering we're only uh, less than 4% of the population of the country. So uh, the employers out in the crowd here, you've done a very remarkable job. And of course, Calgary companies had a struggle to find people in some cases, uh, particularly if they're looking for those people with the right skills and experience, and they've had to reach out across Canada and abroad. And uh, as a result, more than 30,000 people have moved to this region, contributing to the economic vitality that brings Calgary its energy. Also in 2012, Synovus and Canna are moving in, or have moved in, now to that iconic building, the Bow. And I'm very proud to say that Calgary Economic Development got started in that project back in 2004. It's hard to believe. But even with the addition of the Bow, our vacancy rates in the downtown dropped to 5%. Certainly a far cry from the 20% that were predicted a few years ago. In addition to that, building permits across the region reached 5.6 billion, the second highest in record, a 1.8% increase above 2011 and fueled in part by that fantastic new international terminal that's being built at YYC. I wanted to say that for you, Stefan. Um, a few other bright spots that are, you know, that are happening in Calgary relative to the real estate market is that while residential real estates across the country fell in 2012, we bucked that trend. We had an increase of a 7% in our single family homes and housing starts are up 40%. And the entrepreneurial spirit people are st is still alive and well in this city. I can't believe it, but 3,700 companies opened their doors in Calgary in 2012. And if you've been paying attention to the media in 2012, you know there's been a huge amount of foreign investment into this country. Calgary-based companies in particular saw the lion's share of that in the energy sector in particular, and from the Asia Pacific specifically. And uh, most notably that CNOC Nexon deal was in fact the largest foreign investment ever made by a Chinese company anywhere. Now, a lesser known deal I'll mention because we have our friends here from ATB is a $200 million financing of Sunshine Oil Sands. 
a syndicated financing that was led by ATB and participation of the China, our Bank of China, ICBC, the biggest bank in the world by market cap, and several other Canadian and American institutions. So despite all this optimism, folks, um, there is some challenges out there. The energy industry was facing a very difficult environment through 2012. The discounting of Canadian crude and natural gas has certainly had its impact. People that attended this event two years ago may have recalled Steve Worry speaking and predicting that Canadian oil would be discounted if we could not get it to Tidewater. Well, we're still waiting to get it to Tidewater. Let's hope saner heads will prevail now that we get those BC elections behind us. So in all accounts, Calgary was a great place to be in 2012. And we're proud of the work we did with people and businesses and with you, the broader community. But one of the things that we learned from our surveys is that while you people know um, who we are, I don't think you have a great understanding about what we do and why we do it. So the video I'm gonna show you, it's not gonna be the same video you just saw, we got a new one. It's gonna show you the breadth and depth of the work that we do as conduits, connectors, and catalysts. And in the process, we'll also highlight a few of the exciting things that happened in 2012. So let's roll that video. Calgary Economic Development is a conduit connector and catalyst and brings people and business together to create opportunity. We focus on people and community, business and enterprise, and global reach. We are storytellers and promoters and proudly share Calgary's story everywhere we go. As an authoritative resource, provide information and facts that help people decide to make Calgary home, start, grow, or expand their businesses. And why not? Calgary's been named the best place to live in Canada. The fifth most livable city in the world for three years running. We rank first of 60 global cities in return on investment for commercial real estate. And 17th of 79 cities on the Global Financial Centers Index. And this is only our first year. There are numerous global centers. The fact that we're now in the top 20 uh, means that it's a statistic that people will look at and, and pay attention to. Plus, we represent 12% of the world energy merger and acquisition deal volume. In the past three years, Asia-Pacific companies have invested over $53 billion in Calgary energy companies. Yes, Calgary is a vibrant and busy city, and we pay close attention to every facet of it and communicate it to the world. That's what we do. Calgary Economic Development helps link businesses and government, large and small, at home and around the world. In June of last year, when Calgary Economic led a troop of uh, folks from Calgary looking for opportunities in China, that was very useful for us in Hong Kong and in Beijing. I think doing it as a group, you know, with the help of Calgary Economic Development, has been very helpful. Trade, investment and labour missions help build new business relationships with people in different countries and cultures. And often leads to solid business opportunities here at home. Calgary Economic Development has been a key to how we've developed our business over the last seven years. They have provided introductions into the international community that a small company in Calgary uh, couldn't have done all on its own. In 2012, we led 37 companies to China, Colombia, and Australia, where we made business to business, business to government, and government to government introductions. We set up meetings with 118 in market companies, signed four letters of intent with Chinese companies, signed three contracts with Australian companies, and in Bogota, a participating Calgary company opened an international office. It's hard for a small company to capture that international market and without Calgary Economic Development support it would be hard for me to go on a mission and try and open the doors that they're able to open. We help international and local businesses set up and connect here too. Our global business center hosted 22 incoming international delegations. We staged 241 events. And housed 13 new tenants in 2012. Out of 20 tenants that have used the global business center in the last two years, 11 have now set up permanent offices in Calgary. I find Calgary Economic Development to be very proactive in their response and their, in their programming. Um, when they ask us for our input, I think that they're really un making, making sure that they understand our market, 
understand the city of Calgary and what we need from Calgary Economic Development to make our businesses grow. We help companies both launch in Calgary and integrate into the community. Calgary Economic Development has a, a bunch of great tools, uh, books and information that take Calgary's information and the myths that are around Calgary and really dive deeper into what really makes Calgary tick. When they find out about the Plus 15 network and how many meetings you can have in a day, uh, guys in Houston, it blows their hair back. Because Calgary unemployment rates are among the lowest in Canada, our research team helped Calgary companies find sources for skilled labor. We led the development of the Global Labor Demand and Supply Study, which became the driver behind our People Attraction campaign in Ireland and Scotland. And was supported by Jason Kenney, Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and Multiculturalism. By leveraging our new Calgary Be Part of the Energy brand, we earned more than $1.5 million in media value. For attendees at the Jobs Expo, that meant that Calgary was on everyone's list. Our Own the Market approach helped increase awareness about Calgary and allowed our companies to focus on finding employees. And they did. 200 new hires by the end of the year. You know, everyone can buy the equipment and uh, come up with financing and even get projects, but in order to execute, you need the best people. And when you can't find them locally, it makes sense to try and find some of that talent internationally, and Calgary Economic Development has definitely helped us with that. That's how we connect people and business. Here at home, we spark dialogue around creating a better community. Our sold-out Soul of the City speaker series gets people and businesses talking about where Calgary needs to go in the future. Because increasingly, people choose a city first, then a job. As a catalyst, we brought all types and sizes of businesses together and encouraged collaboration between them to create a business ecosystem. Calgary Economic Development is very important to Calgary's success because it allows a dialogue to be created among very important groups that would not otherwise be talking. We spent 2012 creating awareness and gathering government and community support for the Alberta Creative Hub. A multi-purpose film and media production facility that would allow Alberta to grow these creative industries from a $125 million sector to a $500 million industry annually. 2012 also saw our award-winning WorkShift program start to move towards a self-sustaining national initiative. Now WorkShift will evolve to help employees across Canada to work when, how and where they're most effective. We also launched our new corporate brand. Our website is new too and boasts over 300,000 unique hits in 2012. That's up 44% from 2011. International and industry marketing awards are also up. We brought home 31 of them last year. Our Calgary Be Part of the Energy brand is now being used by our major promotional partners. Right here is where I live. Now we all have the same voice to tell Calgary's great story. Also in 2012, our research team filled almost 600 information requests that help people build business cases, assess viability, and make educated decisions to build, grow, and move their businesses to Calgary. Calgary Economic Development has made a difference in our business, not only for the marketing, but providing the information which has helped us to bring transportation logistics companies here. The Calgary business community is our silent strength. It's our Action Calgary Partnership Program that allows us to tell the Calgary story. Change perceptions and invite business and people to be a part of the energy here in Calgary. It's support from the city and the generous investment of Action Calgary Partners that help support our Calgary Be Part of the Energy campaign and other major initiatives. Action Calgary Partners also participate in our missions. Enjoy a high profile in media that we facilitate. And attend partner exclusive networking and development events. Looking ahead to 2013, with the ongoing support of our Action Calgary partners and the City of Calgary. Together, we will continue to invite people and businesses to be part of the energy here in Calgary. I'm, I'm pretty sure we didn't pay anybody to say what they said in that video, but don't check with me. All right, that video, if you want to see it again, it's live on our website. You can watch it again and again, along with our full annual report in a PDF for an in-depth review of our financials. It'll all be there. And uh, I think with you today, you've got a highlight piece that talks about, again, our role as conduits, connectors, and catalysts. So looking ahead, we're going to continue to work connecting business and people and sharing our story and providing information about our city and uh, we'll be looking to create opportunities for individuals and companies to connect both within our city and internationally. So just looking ahead into 2013, it's looking like another strong year economically. We're certainly well into it, 
But I would say there are a few storm clouds on the horizon, maybe a little bit like the weather forecast for the weekend. Uh, our city is forecasted to have GDP growth of a modest 2.9%. And while that's modest, it's still one of the leading jurisdictions in the country. Unemployment is expected to stay, as I stated, for 2012. And uh, redevelopment around the city is going strong. We are seeing office projects announced and under construction in our downtown. We have a good supply of well-serviced industrial land and buildings that are coming up in the region, ideally positioning Calgary as uh, the Western Canadian distribution hub that it is. However, there is a significant set of issues that I think we're facing as a city and the province in this coming year. There's a Keystone Pipeline decision that will be made by the fall. There's hearings on Northern Gateway that are expected to wrap up by year end. The potential for pipeline and rail solutions to address the discounting of our energy project, uh, products will shape the economic confidence not only of the city, but I would say of this province and country. The reality is the long-term sustainability of our energy sector and indeed the economy of our country will depend on Canada achieving export market diversification. Full stop. Now, <clears throat> you've heard, uh, oh, no, one other thing I want to mention. There was a bit of news of late about the temporary foreign worker program. And uh, I want to remind you all that Calgary Economic Development is going to be remaining in the workforce development and attraction business and will continue uh, that as one of our key priorities. Because we, we believe it's important that we strike a balance between hiring locally, hiring nationally, and hiring internationally. And we'll continue to support our post-secondary institutions and our school boards for that matter to ensure that students are trained to enter the workforce with the right skills for the future. Because at the end of the day, the real sustainable way to support our workforce growth is going to be working through our post-secondary system. We'll also continue to share the Calgary Be Part of the Energy message across Canada and internationally. In June, we're pleased to be going to Toronto and Ottawa with the Mayor to speak to business, post-secondary and the media to remind people that a strong Alberta makes a strong Canada. And again, a strong Alberta makes a strong Canada. I think that's the message you can all deliver. Over the past couple of years, at this event, we've focused the message around energy. You've heard about pipelines and energy production. And I think I would tell you it's no less important today as stated by uh, our previous speakers. But I also think it's important that Calgarians hear about some of the other industries and the su other successes that are happening in our economy. And at Calgary Economic Development, we encourage big business to work with small businesses in our city. After all, a highly functioning business ecosystem includes businesses of all sizes. It ensures the economic vitality, promotes diversity, and builds community. So during the next segment of today's lunch, you're going to hear short, snappy presentations from five Calgary-based organizations, both large and small. And I'm pleased to say they're all Action Calgary partners. One of our key initiatives for 2013 is actually to share Calgary's stories and the stories you're going to hear um, that really positions Calgary as a great place to make a living and to make a life. You may have seen these same Action Calgary partners featured on CTV's Energy Maker series that we're doing with ATB, or you may have heard about them in the Herald on their focus on uh, leadership feature. But today you're going to hear about them firsthand and I'm excited about that. However, before we welcome them to the stage, I want to welcome to this po uh, uh, podium the person that I think in the past three years has perhaps made the biggest impact on the image of our city and positioned Calgary on the international stage. He provides unwavering support and guidance to our organization, and he's un uh, uh, as I've alluded to earlier, he's full of great suggestions. Please join me in welcoming His Worship, Mayor Nenshi. Thank you uh, very much, Bruce. I would like to have it noted that um, I wasn't in the first video, 
and the uh, second video had twice as many Jason Kennys as it did me. <sighs> Have to think about that at budget time, won't we? Speaking of budget time, speaking of budget time, um, I would really love it if my council colleagues in attendance today would stand and be recognized. We have today Alderman Richard Putmans, Alderman Peter DeMong, Alderman Brian Pincott. You can all stand. Alderman Brian Pincott, Alderman Jim Stevenson. Where are you all? They're there. I know they're there. And of course, Alderman Brian Pincott uh, serves with great distinction as the City Council representative on the Calgary Economic Development Board of Directors. So I should tell you that uh, when I was getting ready to come up here today, I was told, do not tell your story about how great 2012 was. Everyone has already heard it. So let me tell you about 2012. Because this is, after all, a report looking back and also looking forward. And some of you have already heard this, but it's worth repeating. I remember standing on the stage at Olympic Plaza on December 31st, 2011. And at the stroke of midnight, I may have muffed the uh, countdown a little bit because I was talking, imagine that. And I talked to the thousands of people gathered in Olympic Plaza and I said to them, you know what, 2012 is going to be the year of Calgary. That was the promise that I made at that point. And I think as we look back on 2012, we find that, like so many politicians' promises, that one turned out to be exactly true. And uh, we had a marvelous year, a magnificent year in so many ways as Canada's cultural capital. Certainly every single arts and cultural event um, in the city had a record year. The hardest thing about Calgary culture in 2012 was the difficulty of getting a ticket. We had an amazing year, as you've heard from an economic perspective, I'll come back to that in a minute. We had an amazing year from a tourism perspective, breaking records all over the place. And we had an amazing year from a citizen perspective. So many great things about living and being in this great city. And sometimes we forget just how lucky we are. Just how lucky we are to live in a place where we have the luxury of making choices about who we are and what we want to be because we know that everyone has clean water, that everyone is safe, that everyone has the ability to share in our prosperity. It's actually a really big deal. And it's important for us to reflect on that. It's important for us to reflect on the fact that Calgary is ranked one of the top five countries, or top five cities in the world to live in by The Economist, three years running. The Calgary has been ranked this year the number one city in Canada in which to live, that 3,700 businesses, as you've heard, have set up in Calgary, that Calgary is increasingly becoming an even stronger magnet of talent. These are important things, and they're things that we need to be proud of. We managed to build a really great place here, a great place where things are going well. You know, every year we do a survey of citizens. We call it the Citizen Satisfaction Index, and we go out and ask citizens how they're feeling about their lives here in Calgary. And this year, the pollster came to see me before the release, which he doesn't normally do. And he said, Mayor, I need to talk to you about these numbers. And I said, okay. And he said, I gotta tell you, I've run the models over and over again. I've checked the figures and I've checked our math and I'm really confident in our numbers. Now, this is the same pollster that released a memo today about the British Columbia election and how confident they were in their numbers. But, let's just say that they were confident in those numbers. And he said, Mayor, the problem that I've got is I have no idea how you can sustain numbers this high. Because people are so happy to live here. 89% of people are proud to be Calgarian. 78% of people are very pleased uh, with the quality of city services. Heck, 70% of people even like their city council. And he said, we don't see numbers like this anywhere. But it speaks to who we are. In another survey that Angus Reid did last summer, they asked citizens in Canada's major cities to rank their quality of life. No surprise, Calgary came in first in 10 out of 12 rankings. We tied for first in the 11th. But the most important one was when people were asked, is yours a city on the rise? Is yours a city on the rise? 90% of Calgarians said yes. And they said that they were optimistic about the city and optimistic about the future. Makes my life and my job a lot easier. And so our job now is to continue to tell that story, to continue to tell that story loudly and proudly about what we've managed to create here that is in many ways unique in the world. And I've had the opportunity to do that 
on a national and international stage a little bit in this job. And it's one of the things that I think is really important for all of us to do, for all of us to use our voice to ensure that we are helping tell the story of this place. I have to tell you that be part of the energy campaign is a remarkable thing. It's really having great impact in many, many, many ways. That video you saw is absolutely magnificent. You know, you know how you know the video is successful? You know the video is successful when it's difficult for even me to be cynical about it. And you know, it's awesome to live in a place where everyone is gorgeous and no one is over 30. So, <laughs> that's why I'm not in the video. But what I really like about the Be Part of the Energy uh, campaign is that it allows us to come together as a community. And I think that the partnership and the adoption of that across the different agencies has been enormously successful. I love the consistency of it. And what really matters about it is that, yes, it talks about the energy industry. Of course it does. But it's about so much more than that. It's about something that we take for granted here in the city but is very, very true. I hear it from visitors and newcomers to the city all the time. And that is the energy in the air, the electricity in the air, the can-do attitude, the feeling like in this place under that giant prairie sky, anything is possible. We've captured something here. And we need to make sure that we have the ability together to capitalize on it so that we can all build a prosperous future together. Now, of course, as you heard from Bruce, there are challenges. There are risks that we have to think about as we go forward and we particularly have to think about in 2013. The first is the one we all know very well, access to markets. We have to figure out a way that we can get access to multiple markets to reduce the risk within our energy sector. We have to be able to do it in a way, of course, that's environmentally responsible and that is seen to be environmentally responsible, but that access is vital for our future. And our colleagues in the provincial and federal governments have been working hard on ensuring the adoption of Keystone XL. I don't know what's gonna happen with the West Coast. Anyone's guess uh, is as good as ours. I met with the mayor of St. John, New Brunswick recently, uh, just day before yesterday as a matter of fact, and we talked a lot about the East-West pipeline. All of these have to happen. We need to adopt an all of the above strategy, and we have to figure out how the best way to do that is. I wanna talk for a moment as well about one of Calgary Economic Development's major um, projects, which I fear is in some danger and that is the Alberta Creative Hub. It is essential, essential for the future of our community to be able to build that film studio here in Calgary and to be able to attract the creative industries and maintain the creative industries in this city. I am nervous about this. I am nervous that our partners and other orders of government are losing their nerve on it a little bit. I am nervous that the models that they're bringing forward are not models that will work successfully uh, for that film studio, that creative hub, to be successful in the long run. And I can guarantee you that Calgary Economic Development, in conjunction with your city council, will continue to work hard to press for the interests of the creative industries in Calgary and make sure that that film studio gets built and that it gets built in a way that will ensure the long-term success of those industries in the city. I'm also concerned, as you've all heard me say many, many times, I'm concerned about the future of our post-secondary institutions in this city. I've said often, 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 and that's not just because I'm a university professor when I'm not being the mayor, that great cities need great universities. And great universities need great support. They need great support from the community, but they also need great support from government. And we have to ensure that we understand that investments in post-secondary education are investments in the economic vitality of our community. Their investments in talent attraction, their investments in innovation, their investments in creativity, and above all, they are investments in the economy. I just learned last night, I happened to be at a function um, celebrating the partnership between the University of Calgary and the state of Qatar. And I learned that in Qatar, 2.9% of their budget, of the state's budget, goes to research. Not just to education, to research. That is a remarkable commitment and a remarkable bet on the future for that nation, and it is a bet that all of us can learn from. All of this is going to take partnerships. It's going to take partnerships between industry. It's going to take um, partnerships with the nonprofit sector, and in particular, it will take partnership with government. 
And I urge all of you to continue to be advocates for this place, to continue to be advocates for this city with other orders of government, with our province and with our federal government, to make sure that they understand that investments in our cities pay off, that a strong Calgary leads to a strong Canada, that a strong Alberta leads to a strong Canada, certainly, but this happens in our cities. People choose cities as where they want to live. They choose cities as to where they want to invest. And frankly, it's the cities that pay the taxes in this country. City taxpayers send far more money to provincial and federal governments than they get back in all provincial and federal services. So when you hear mayors like me asking the provincial and federal governments to help sustain and maintain and build infrastructure in our cities, we're not asking for a handout. We're asking for a tax rebate to make sure that we are in continuing to make our city strong, to attract that business, and frankly, to attract those taxpayers. I want to talk to you about one more thing. It's very common, obviously, when we're looking at a 2012 annual report to really focus on the positive and the amazing things that have happened in this great, prosperous place, and we should do that, and we need to do that. But I want to remind you that not all Calgarians are sharing in our prosperity. Last week, we had the great uh, privilege to launch the Calgary Poverty Reduction Strategy. The Calgary Poverty Reduction Strategy is also a cornerstone in our future prosperity, to understand that every one of us has a role to play in ensuring that those of our neighbours who are living in poverty have access to a great life. Because that really is what our success is based on. It's not based on carbon atoms under Fort McMurray, a two and a half hour WestJet flight away. It's based on the fact that we have created something here where we recognize that every single person in every single corner of the city should have the opportunity to live a great life. And so to those of you in business, I'll be turning to you over the next little while and talking to you about poverty and talking to you about what we can do to make sure that we are leading the world in reducing poverty in our community. And that means not just corporate investment and corporate giving, as important as that is. It means thinking hard about our own business practices. Do our hiring practices allow new Canadians to get a foothold in the economy and access to a middle-class life and give them those dirty words, Canadian experience, that they need? Do our procurement policies and our supply chain allow us to foster the growth of wealth-creating entrepreneurs in our own community? Do we recognize that our businesses are above all communities of employees and that if an employee stumbles, the first place that should be able to help catch them beyond their family is their workplace? I encourage all of you to think hard about these questions and to think hard about how the prosperity of your business can also be shared with prosperity through the entire community. Your city government will continue to work on these issues. We'll continue to work on cutting red tape. We'll continue to work on removing the business tax, uh, which we have decided to do. We will continue to work to make sure that this remains the, not just a competitive place to do business, but the very best place in Canada to start and grow a business. But as we do that, we will make sure that we are also together, all of us, as partners, building a Calgary that is even better. Thank you all. Well, as you can see in here, Calgary is definitely an exciting place to be part of the energy right now. And we see it all over our city, in businesses and in the people that make Calgary unique. At ATB, you might be surprised, but one in four businesses in this province deal with us. And I can tell you what we see. Our clients dream big, and nobody can tell them that they can't fulfill their dreams. We're now going to move to the next portion of our program and share five stories that truly showcase some of our, the energy in our city. Many of you are quite familiar with these five organizations, but we certainly hope the stories that are shared today will make you think and leave you feeling like you learned something new that makes you proud and excited to be part of the energy. Each presenter will only have five minutes, that's five minutes, to share their story using 20 slides, and those slides automatically advance every 15 seconds. So talk about putting pressure on presenters. First up is the executive vice president of an organization that certainly places attracting and retaining great employees and building a unique culture at the top of the list when it comes to keys to success. Ferio Pugliese. 
took over as EVP of WestJet and president of WestJet Encore in November of last year after serving as the EVP of the airline's pe people, culture, and in-flight services department. Ferio and his team have been instrumental in defining and executing people plans that support WestJet's culture, and we know that's a great culture, and strategic direction. He is extremely proud that WestJet has been named to Canada's Corporate Cultures Hall of Fame and was recognized as one, as ca one of Canada's most admired corporate cultures for four consecutive years from 2005 to 2009. With a passion for business, Ferio believes you have to continually push your comfort zone by believing in yourself and the people around you, and together you can reach new heights. Please welcome Ferio. Wellington, thanks for the, uh, the warm welcome, and it's a pleasure to be here representing uh, WestJet, and certainly a uh, pleasure to be part of uh, Calgary's economic development. Um, seeing as I've only got uh, five minutes, and they told me that once I start talking, the slides advance, uh, I'm on a strict timeline. So the presentation is actually entitled WestJet Encore by the Numbers. And what we'll attempt to do here is tell you this story uh, by allowing the numbers to jump off the pa page and, uh, and speak to things. And I was told that this is an Ignite presentation, which means you need to do it in a short period of time, enlighten, but don't take the, the, the world to do it. Sounds like a conversation with my boss. Anyways, great story. You all know WestJet. Uh, the story today is built on passion, pride, and culture. And certainly one that we've been recognized for since our inception in 1996. We started from some pretty humble roots, 200 employees, three aircraft, five destinations, and I can tell you now we're creating WestJet Encore, very, very similar to the foundation that we've created uh, with WestJet, and it's going to transcend to the new airline. 1996, we had a humble network, five destinations. The furthest east we went was Winnipeg. That was to allow people to use their air miles to vacation in Winnipeg. I hope there's no one in Winnipeg here. But five cities and regional. Today, 85 cities, 18 countries. And I'm, for those in the energy and oil and gas sector, we burned 1 billion liters of fuel last year, in case you're wondering. Um, remarkable growth over a 17-year period. How is that done? It's done with the care, compassion, dedication of 9,000 WestJetters, of which 70% live right here in Calgary. Now... Uh, when we look at uh, the growth of WestJet and where we we're going, the first big idea was start an airline, and it was to do it differently, be friendly, but also be affordable. The second idea was do the same and repeat it with WestJet Encore, a second company within a company. The only difference is we've got 9,000 people to convince that we need to do this again. So how does a, uh, a customer-centric and employee-centric company do this? Well, we put it to a vote, and if the vote was no, we were prepared to shelve the idea. So what happened? Well, we went on the campaign trail. I felt that we were out uh, just like uh, the presidential campaign, out shaking hands and kissing babies, we went and did 100 presentations across the country, 31 bases, and then we put it to a vote, and WestJetters voted 91% in favor of launching this new airline. Next step, we need an airplane. So where do we go? We started the Bake Off. Two aircraft manufacturers, ATR and Bombardier, came to the table. We looked at these both very, very carefully for our regional uh, service, and the winner was Bombardier, the Q400 next generation Canadian-made aircraft. We placed 20 firm orders, and now we have 25 options, close to a $1 billion investment directly into Canada's economy and coming right here into Alberta and to Calgary. Now we need a name, so what better way? Ask your people. 842 entries, 13 selected for review, two were put to a vote, and when we uh, wrapped all of that up, we came down to two possibilities, Echo or Encore. And obviously, the winner was WestJet Encore. Seemed to resonate. Also translates well into our other official language, in case anyone's wondering. And as we start to move down the path, it's where do we go? There's so much pent-up demand. The solution was speed dating. Yes, speed dating. Instead of going out to the communities, we invited them to see us. We gave them 20 minutes. They pitched their case, and we would decide after that day of, of presentations where we would go. In February, we announced our first two destinations, Fort St. John and Nanaimo. And Monday of this week, we announced our third new destination, which is Brandon, Manitoba. We have one more to come. 
which will remain a secret until the summertime because they don't know either. And now we need people. By the end of this year, we'll have seven aircraft into that network, and we need 196 West Jetters to help uh, get that started. Thus far, and speaking just to the demand of employment within our province, 4,300 applications we've served thus far. So, now you know all of this. How many cities in Canada could host such a great success story? Well, it's right here. It's Calgary. Calgary's been uh, just an exceptional supporter to WestJetter uh, and to the WestJet family. And as a result, we put our headquarters right here in Calgary. And to maturity, by 2018, we're going to be putting over 1 million more seats of travel into this city and connecting people. So one simple message with all of this, this was all brought together by the passion, the commitment, the dedication of a number of people who are committed to growing a brand across Canada. And as a result of that, we've been able to bring something to fruition through the participation of a whole host of people. So I'll leave you with one other simple message. Calgary, we appreciate the support you've given us. Uh, book now, let's fly together. Cheers. That was very awesome. I, I, uh, that's not easy to do, by the way. Um, the ability for large and small businesses to create a rich and diverse economy is a key reason why so many Calgary businesses call, call Calgary home. Calgary Economic Development has spent time and effort supporting and connecting smaller businesses to ensure these entrepreneurial organizations strive to be the best in their industry and are seeing the results. Heather Lawton is the Director of Operations at Calgary-based Quintero Imaging, a leading Canadian art manufacturing company that collaborates with designers to produce site-specific artwork and wall decor for the hospitality, healthcare, and corporate markets across North America. From Starwood to Hilton Hotels, they've helped create environments that set the tone for each brand's personality and style. Heather is deeply rooted in Calgary. Her commitment and passion for this city can be seen in her work outside of work as she is the Vice Chair Committee member for the Calgary Stampede and serves on the Board of Directors for the Calgary Arts Academy Foundation. Please welcome Heather Lawton. Thank you, Wellington. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I was asked by CED to tell my story about being a small business in Calgary and I would like to share uh, with you why I think the term buying locally needs to extend to sectors outside restaurants and farmers markets. Before I begin though, I would like to take a minute to explain who we are and what we do. Quintaro is proud to do work for some of the most prominent businesses in Calgary and around the world, and I hope that these visuals will help give a better understanding of some of the work we produce right here in town. Our work ranges from art and graphics to printing and sign making, designing and prototyping to installation and everything in between. During our 35 years in business, as technology has changed and digital processes have replaced the traditional ones, we have evolved into a multifaceted production facility for permanent graphics. We often work with designers, architects and communication firms to collaborate on graphics, including wayfinding, privacy partitions, commercial art and display solutions. We offer printing on a variety of materials, including metal, bamboo, glass, and stone to differentiate ourselves from other print shops. This is an example of uh, printing on glass. We have always kept a strong focus on value-added products, but a few years ago it became apparent that we were, in fact, more distinctive in our industry than we first thought. Manufacturers and distributors were using our firm as an example to showcase innovation within the printing industry and coming to us for samples, ideas, and to collaborate on projects. Our unique approach to the industry earned us clients from around the globe, including Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, and Las Vegas. International clients were seeking our work, but local companies were sometimes surprised to find out that this type of work was being produced right here in Calgary. We were the best kept secret in town. Not good. John from Telespark told me, we struggled to find exactly what we were looking for and finally had it produced in Europe, only to later discover, uh, discover Quintaro produced this graphic work right in our own backyard. I believe that there are still some Alberta businesses buying abroad simply because they are unaware of fantastic local resources. So what does a company do to remedy this situation? 
My job now is to let industries outside of my own know they can search the globe for the most creative ideas in design and graphics, and they are now armed with the capability to have it produced right here in Calgary. As a born and raised Calgarian with a passion for the stampede, I was excited to get a call from Ken Knight, premium, uh, pardon me, premium seating manager for Calgary Stampede. He requested that Quintaro create a memorable stone founder's wall, seen here, celebrating a legacy to those who have supported Ranahan's and the Lazy S. This just went up last week. Our work is also integrated into architectural elements, as seen here on the boardroom windows for Tyne Energy. Straying from conventional privacy film proved a huge success and elevated Tyne's corporate interior with a fusion of commercial graphic and art. Buy local initiatives are popping up all over town, encouraging consumers to consider the positive environmental and economic impact of buying locally. There are other reasons to consider too. Local businesses tend to invest more back in their communities. They place a high value on their customers, and taxes paid by local vendors stay right here in our community. Although buying locally is often associated with restaurants, farmers markets, and retail shops, I encourage you to think about commercial and industry-specific businesses as well. REAP Calgary states on their website that the recirculation of money in the local economy creates powerful multiplying effect, and that for every $100 spent, a local business recirculates up to 68 of those dollars. The following quote from Jeff Milchin really spoke to me as an entrepreneur. Local owners, typically having invested much of their life savings into their business, have a natural interest in the community's long-term health. The most engaged entrepreneurs and small businesses are giving back in a variety of ways. As an entrepreneur, I want to give support to the community that has supported me over the years. One of our proudest associations is being an Action Calgary partner with CED. The people involved with this organization are warm and welcoming and have provided me with incredible business connections and a direct link to our community as a whole. Supporting local businesses that support arts, education, and not-for-profit is a win-win for our community and for our city. It instills a sense of civic pride while supporting the local economy. I want to thank CED for the incredible opportunity to speak to you. It is rewarding to work in a city as vibrant and diverse as Calgary and with people and businesses that I respect. They not only help my business grow, but help my business thrive. I encourage all businesses, whatever size, to search globally for inspiration, but to find a local producer whenever possible to help back, invest back in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. That was great. Uh, putting together a skilled workforce is becoming more and more important in Calgary as we look at the skills organizations need. Mount Royal University is taking an innovative approach when it comes to developing skilled workers, collaborating with industry to make sure that the skills that are being developed are the ones that the companies will need in the future. Virginia Deschain is a member of the Algonquin First Nation of the Kit, I'm gonna please apologize if I don't say this correctly, Kitigan Zibi Unishinu Beg. I'm working on that one. From the province of Quebec. She's a McGill University graduate and holds a bachelor's degree in education. She previously worked as an educator in her community and in the James Bay area of Quebec, in the urban Aboriginal population in Ottawa, and in the nonprofit sector, or sorry, in the nonprofit sector with Aboriginal affairs at the University of Ottawa, and has now found her way to Calgary. Virginia works with Mount Royal University at the Inniskim Center for Aboriginal Students as the Aboriginal Science and Technology Education Program Coordinator. Please welcome Virginia. Thank you. Do you remember the moment you realized what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Maybe you knew as a child, maybe it was more recent, or maybe you're still searching. Whatever your situation, there's an undeniable energy that is released when at last you know. For thousands of people every year, the journey to that de destination starts at Mount Royal University where our priority is student success through quality teaching and personalized learning. At the heart of that focus is the personalized support that makes the Mount Royal experience so distinctive. Since the 1960s, Mount Royal has been particularly aware of the barriers that Aboriginal students face as they pursue a post-secondary education, including financial, housing, 
childcare, and experiences of racism. We also know that Canada's future economic success will be closely linked with the academic success of Aboriginal peoples, and that the Aboriginal community is growing more quickly than any other community in the country. Today, more than 450 self-identified Aboriginal students are attending Mount Royal. This represents one of the highest numbers of Aboriginal students attending a post-secondary institution in Calgary. That's why, six years ago, Mount Royal opened the Aniskim Centre, which offers programs and services that support Aboriginal students. For many, it is their academic home away from home. So where do you come in, you ask? Well, I am in charge of the newest program offered by the Aniskim Centre. It is the Aboriginal Science and Technology Education Program, or as we call it, ASTEP. This program is offered in partnership with Mount Royal's Faculty of Science and Technology and it is made possible through a generous donation of $1 million from the Imperial Oil Foundation. For Aboriginal students in Alberta high schools and communities, ASTEP highlights the many opportunities open to them in the science and technology sector. As the ASTEP administrator, my goal is to bring 25 full-time students into Mount Royal Science and Technology programs every fall. Currently, Aboriginal students make up less than 1% of Mount Royal's Bachelor of Science students, so spreading the word about ASTEP at every opportunity is a priority to grow the program. For example, we are planning a summer science camp for high school students, and I serve as a liaison with high school science teachers and guidance counselors in Aboriginal communities. But it's probably easier to understand when you hear Danielle Thomas's story. Danielle is about to graduate from the Aboriginal Education Program. At the age 24, she discovered a passion for fossils and rocks. And today, ASTEP is helping Danielle apply to Mount Royal's Bachelor of Science Program. She plans to take geology as her major. Danielle has surmounted several of the barriers that confront many Aboriginal students. A single mother at the age of 17, she has worked hard to overcome addiction, learn parenting skills, and embark on an educational journey. Danielle's story isn't just one success story, it's a series of successes. Those successes include changing her personal life, returning to school, completing the Aboriginal education program, and completing it outstandingly well. Danielle's latest success, being accepted into Mount Roy's Bachelor um, of Science program. Through ASTEP, Danielle meets the mentors from Mount Royal Science programs, is connected with student services, and can be given referrals to other support programs and resources. Most importantly, ASTEP is available to Aboriginal students throughout their post-secondary career. Danielle's education will help her successfully enter the workforce as a geologist, a field identified as a high-demand occupation in Calgary. In addition to dedicating her energy towards her studies at Mount Royal, Danielle is also dedicated to helping her peers discover the opportunities and supports available. She volunteers as a math tutor with the Uniscom Center, and she's in high demand. Ask her, and Danielle says she just wants to help our people. ASTEP is still in its early stages, but we are working to expand opportunities. Recently, Calgary Urban Aboriginal Initiative joined with the Uniscom Center and the Aboriginal students at Mount Royal to host an um, alumni mentorship mixer night. The goal is to launch a full mentorship program in the fall of 2013. Whenever I tell Danielle's story, or the stories of so many other ASTEP students, I feel great pride in being an advocate for students' success. I am honored that Danielle chose to share her story with me, and that I can, in turn, share it with you. I am proud to be surrounded by the possibilities opening up in the lives of ASTEP students and invigorated by the energy that comes with these opportunities. And I encourage you to visit the Aniskim Center to see firsthand the impact ASTEP is having on the success of our students. Thank you so much for listening. Many of you have heard of Calgary Economic Development's Work Shift program that helps companies support their employees to work when, where, and how they are most effective. 
TELUS has now created their version and rolled it out to employees across the country. Andrea Gertz is the Senior Vice President of Strategic Initiatives and the Chief Communications and Sustainability Officer at TELUS. Andrea is a veteran of the telecommunications industry and leads a national team for, responsible for TELUS's real estate strategy, travel services, employee health and wellness, communications, public affairs, corporate sponsorship, event marketing, and government relations. Whew, that's big. Um, currently, Andrea is leading the development of the Telus Garden, a $750 million, 1 million square foot project featuring a 24-story LEED Platinum office tower and LEED Gold 53-story residential tower in the heart of Vancouver. Andrea is passionate about volunteering in her community and is a respected member of the Mayor's Champions Champion of the Arts Council, the TELUS Calgary Community Board, and Management Advisory Council of the Haskane School of Business at the University of Calgary. Please welcome Andrea. Thank you, Wellington. It's great to be here today. At TELUS, we believe there is a symbiotic relationship between our company, our team, and the health of our communities. We take a triple bottom line approach to business, balancing economic growth with a diligent focus on environmental and social goals. It is essential that we live up to our brand promise. The future is friendly in everything that we do, including our approach to corporate real estate. TELUS is dedicated to creating workplaces that support flexible work styles and offer a future-friendly team member experience. Our goal is to create exceptional work environments that mirror our culture and reflect our brand, guided by our mantra, better space, but less of it. We are consolidating our teams into new workspaces that are designed to foster creativity, innovation, and spirited teamwork. Between 2009 and 2012, TELUS reduced our space requirements by over 1 million square feet. By the end of 2016, we will have reduced our lease costs by 200 million or 50 million on an annual basis. These savings are being reinvested into our business for the benefit of you, our valued customers. In 2006, we introduced WorkStyles, an innovative program that equips TELUS team members with the technology to work when and where they are most effective. Our national WorkStyles program and our sustainability efforts are led right here in Calgary. By 2015, our goal is to have 70% of our 40,000 team members working from home or on a mobile basis, at least part-time. Currently, on any given workday, 47% of our team members work from home. We are leveraging advanced technology solutions to support our commitment to moving ideas and information instead of people, paper, and vehicles. Additionally, our high-speed internet and wireless networks are supporting our team's efficient and collaborative work styles. Our super high definition video conferencing system, Telepresence, is deployed in 19 telecoms locations across Canada. This innovation increases collaboration across teams and has contributed to us minimizing our carbon footprint. To support our mobile team when they want to work in the office alongside our colleagues, we've introduced an online tool that allows team members to reserve a workspace through their computer or mobile device. Our beautiful workplaces offer amenities that include comfortable meeting and lounge areas, drop-in workstations for team members traveling from other locations, open areas for creative, collaborative work, and dedicated quiet zones for more contemplative work. In addition to the contribution our WorkStyles program has made to significant real estate savings, it has also had a phenomenal impact on the environment. We have reduced carbon emissions by 20,000 tons, equivalent to taking 4,200 cars off the road or saving the energy needed to power 3,000 homes. We are striving for lead gold or higher in all of our new and retrofitted buildings. Despite the fact that there are no federal government standards, we have made a commitment to create more sustainable buildings and to foster healthier communities because it is the right thing to do. TELUS House Toronto is one of the most technologically advanced and environmentally progressive buildings in North America that reduces electricity consumption by 25% and water consumption by 10,000 litres per year. TELUS Garden in downtown Vancouver will be one of the first LEED Platinum office towers in North America. This next generation development will reduce energy consumption by up to 80% compared to similar sized buildings. 
Well, you've heard a little bit about what we're doing in Toronto and Vancouver, and you might be wondering what is next for TALUS in Calgary. Well, stay tuned. We have a work of art in progress. We will, of course, be leveraging our work styles program in Calgary and reaping the rewards we've experienced in other locations. For example, in Toronto alone, we realized tremendous improvements. Productivity increased by 5%, and access to private space and meeting space increased by over 40% each. Our innovative strategies are attracting global attention. We've been honored by the Dow Jones Sustainability North American Index for 12 years, a feat unequaled by any North American telco or cable co. We've been recognized by the Global 100 Most Sustainable Companies in the World by Corporate Nights three times. We take pride in our ability to innovate and find new perspectives on hot issues like sustainable growth. This is important for our planet and also for our team, as we know that 80% of global workers want to work for an organization that is environmentally responsible. In 2012, TELUS achieved a remarkable 80% overall team engagement score. We are now ranked amongst the top 1% globally for employee engagement. This high employee engagement fosters exceptional customer interactions. This supports TELUS's top corporate priority to put customers first and earn our customers' recommendations of our products, services, and our people. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. <clears throat> there is an incredible amount of crea creative talent in this city. And what is interesting is that many of our creative resources compete on a global stage and are tapped by companies outside our great city. Jim Bun Button spent 25 years getting to, to this spot in his life. He is a big booster of Calgary and is proud to call himself a Calgarian. He in invests considerable time sitting on volunteer boards and advisory councils ranging from M Mount Royal to the Calgary Stampede, Folk Festival, the Mayor's Business Luncheon for the Arts, and most importantly these days coaching the U12 Hearts in Girls Soccer. He is a marketing strategist at the Evan Evans, Hunt Evans Hunt Group, co-founder of Village Brewery, father of two, husband of one, and we think of the world, we think the world of Jim at ATB. Please welcome Jim Button. <clears throat> All right, let's let it rip. I'm, I'm Jim Button of Evans Hunt, but actually I'm gonna change our name. I'm Jim Button of Evans Hunt Button. I'm going to launch the new logo right now for you. Seconds from now. There. Evan Sutton Button. Unfortunately, the button is silent, and it's only for today. But I thought I wanted to see what it looked like up on a big screen. Actually, the event, the company was started by Dan, Dan Evans and Bill Hunt. Uh, four years ago, they were the president and senior vice president of Critical Mass, another great global digital marketing firm, uh, but they had young families, they had uh, elite status on two airlines and thought maybe it was due time to actually become a little more engaged in their local community. And in those four years, they've gone from two employees to 50 employees. They've built up a beautiful roster of incredibly iconic Calgary companies and organizations and are still probably at about 30% of their business in uh, international. When I, when I started thinking about what I wanted to say up here in terms of why that company is, is doing so well, an awful lot of it had to do with the culture. And I think a lot of it is the same type of challenge or, or scenario that's happening with, uh, with Calgary. They're very much intertwined. And when I think about Calgary and I think about the challenges it's had, it, it's because it's had a hard time trying to understand where it's fit in the global stage or the community of Canada. And right now it feels like Canada, Calgary is really comfortable in its own skin and it's really doing quite well. And I think an awful lot of that has got to be with the fact that we are moving so fast and we're moving collectively as a group. And we've had a bit of a coming of age. So now we're actually thinking and believing that we are the best. And that makes all the difference in the world. But when I talk about culture, I'm not necessarily talking about our great capacity to give away free breakfast. So I'm talking about all those things that we do as a company or as a city or as an individual. That's what determines your culture. And so I want to have a quick conversation around that. It's like any, take the NHL right now. It's like any team. 
The best teams aren't the teams with the best players. The best teams are the teams that culturally all start working together and doing the better work by doing it together, by being a little bit more creative and collaborative. And I think that's attractive to people and to, to cities. Evans Hunt right now is at a, at a really good spot, and, and it's gotten to that spot partly because the city itself has gotten to the point where it's, it's ready to be transformed. And with a group of individuals at Evans Hunt that are actually globally networked and, and leading with that experience, we're actually able to move further forward and help that transformation out. We've got some interesting people that we work with. They've been on the global stage doing great work for global companies. Uh, they've really just traded big for local and, and global for community. So. Uh, that doesn't mean, if you take a look at, this, at, at the list of incredible global clients that we have from San Francisco or Switzerland, great work can be done anywhere. I just happen to think great work happens to be coming out of this city right now. We turned the model up of, uh, of an agency upside down a little bit, where we hire just senior staff, or a majority of the people are just senior staff. It's actually more efficient. You actually get better work. It's more fun to work at. Clients are happier working with you, and you actually get the work done a little bit quicker, and I think the work ends up being better. What we've also found out uh, at Evan Sunt is our clients really love, you know, the idea of the work shift is they love working from anywhere. They're happier doing work elsewhere. That means they're happier. And, and they actually tend to be coming back to Calgary as a result of that. The search optimization of both Calgary and Evan Sunt seemed to be peaking and doing very well. We had a gentleman come to us from the UK who actually wanted to come to Calgary and wanted to work at Evan Sunt, but he only found that out through, through the search. So that's, that's a good sign for Calgary. Like I said before, uh, Bill and Dan started the company because they really wanted to be connected to the community. And they're participating with the clients that we have in actually driving that Calgary story. And that's really exciting for all of our, all of our staff and our employees. But to keep engaged uh, employees, you actually have to be leading the edge. And so at, at the Mayor's Luncheon for the Arts, we actually heard a great story from John of Trey McIntyre where he said, we are out the forefront and we are pushing the arts and cultural story. So be proud of that and use that as one of your levers because it's a strong and powerful message. Our clients are demanding a higher level of creativity, creativity and innovation. They're asking us to be a little bit more collaborative. And I think as a city, that is happening as well. So again, that transformation keeps moving forward and keeps becoming more attractive as a magnet. And if you have that culture of excellence and you have that culture of collaboration and creativity, that magnet just keeps moving inwards to you that you can keep that momentum and moving it forward. So I think Calgary's well positioned. Thanks very much for all the great work you guys are doing here at Economic Development. At at Evan Sunt, we're doing exceptionally well, and I think a large part of it is because of all the great work that everybody else in the city is doing, uh, but it's the culture. At the epicenter of everything, it's the great culture. Um, just so you guys understand the speed of what 15 seconds is, does anybody have any questions? That's all for today. Thank you very much. So, I hope you've enjoyed the new format for Calgary Economic Development's report to the community. And we'll take away some new insights and in what it means to be part of the energy in Calgary. But before you go, if you've waited this long, you are most likely entered to win a couple WestJet tickets for a trip for two to any location in Canada that WestJet flies. And do we have the bucket? We do. These are all well shaken and everything. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, Carrie Obrigowicz, I think. Obrigowicz from Cardell Homes, VP Finance. Are you here? We're here. Winner of two WestJet tickets to anywhere they fly in Canada. Now, one year ago, we're almost done. One year ago, um, the, uh, I, I was introduced to Twitter by our mayor, Nancy. He, in fact, was my first follower, and I couldn't leave today without putting one plug in. Please follow me on Twitter. But in early June, um, ATB will be publishing our quarterly research on the state of business in Alberta. So please follow me uh, on Twitter at Wellington underscore ATB to learn more. We are also interesting, uh, we're sharing interesting insights on the uh, issues that are on the minds of entrepreneurs every day. We'd love to know what you think. Finally, a big thank you to everyone that was involved in making today's event a success. We look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you, everyone.